First, thank you for taking the time to talk with me here. Uh, it's nice, and I uh, listened to your uh, public speaking event yesterday. Um, but for yeah, the ones who don't know you and so on, do you want to introduce yourself and what you do? Sure, of course. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure mm -hmm. to speak to you and to your audience. Um, so my name is um, Carolina. I come from Brazil. Um, I am a journalist and I started mm. working with um, undercover investigations in 2006 when I was living in the UK. And at this time, I was exposed to many factory farms and slaughterhouses. And that, of course, uh, changed my life forever. Uh, so I kept working in the animal uh, protection movement. And in late 2017, I founded uh, this organization, which is called Synergia Animal. Um, so what we do is to uh, work in global south countries, which is a new terminology for developing countries, mm -hmm. uh, trying to reduce uh, the suffering of farmed animals and also to promote uh, plant-based um, eating habits. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> um, and what were like the main points yesterday uh, that you had in the presentation? And maybe we can go through some of them. Sure. Yeah, so I think the presentation... Uh, the first topic was about um, the need of training and developing leaders to to run uh, a fast-growing organization. Mm. Um, so yeah, our experience is that, especially because we work in global South countries where the animal protection movement is relatively small and sometimes yeah. very small, um, it can be challenging to find um, experienced people uh, mm. who have done previous work uh, in, in big organizations. So what we did was to hire a team of very passionate, very intelligent and very mm. skilled people who were um, involved in, in similar um, work before, but they had never been leaders before. Yeah. Um, mm. And um, I think our... our biggest mistake is that we didn't know that um, we should train our leaders and we should prepare mm. them because it mm. can be very challenging yeah, yeah. Uh, to be a leader when you're not ready for it. Um, so we gave them a lot of people to manage. We gave them uh, many responsibilities. Um, um, they had, um, and I include myself in that, so <laughs> we, we did have many challenges. We didn't know how to conduct uh, difficult conversations with our team members. We didn't know how to evaluate performance. Mm. Um, yeah, and we didn't know how to delegate as well. We were like, yeah. we were great doers, uh, but we didn't know how to teach and how to ask mm. people um, to do more. And we, yeah. we should be more, more focused on supervising than doing things. Mm. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm sad to say that that created some some problems. So we had uh, our team members uh, complaining about uh, lack of autonomy, um, maybe a little bit of micromanaging, but we also, uh, the consequences were also challenging for our leaders because uh, they were very stressed out sometimes. Some yeah. of them said they were close to burnout. Mm. Uh, so what we learned is that we really have to provide a professional training when it comes to leadership. There are mm. many good alternatives out there. Uh, so we are doing this now. It's it's work in nice. progress. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we are really excited. We think mm. we are gonna we are building a more um, effective organization with mm. better uh, working conditions for everybody. Yeah. Uh, we are hoping that our teams are going to be more um, productive, more effective, but mm. also uh, happier and, and yeah. more healthy. Yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Like we, uh, uh, like I'm not sure if I mentioned to you, but like I, I run two NGOs here in Norway and uh, they're pretty small. So, uh, and we've gotten some feedback both from our volunteers, but also from like funders and so on. Uh, that yeah, we need to be better at like structure and delegating and so on. So I find this really interesting. Uh, and yeah, like I learned a lot yesterday, but I thought it would be super cool to talk again about it today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. So what more? Or like <laughs> yeah. So the second, the second topic I spoke yeah. about yesterday was about working with, um, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, mm. So as as we come from global south countries, um, all of us uh, live in countries that have 
a history of colonialism, uh, discrimination, and major social injustices. So we want our organization and our movement to be better than our societies. Mm. So we decided to start, um, yeah, really being a more um, uh, diverse and actable organization. So when we decided to do that again, we didn't have a lot of experience. We just mm. had a lot of passion. Mm. Uh, and I would say that we did waste um, a bit of our time trying to figure out uh, what to do. Uh, but what we learned is that if you want to do this type of work, uh, you need resources. And when we hired our, P our people and operations director, mm -hmm. she already had uh, some good experience. So cool. she knew uh, what to do and that improved things a lot. Um, and But still, we still had the, the challenge of finding talent from these uh, minoritized groups. Mm -hmm. uh, As we know, uh, research shows that um, sometimes people from minoritized groups uh, don't feel as confident as others from more privileged groups uh, to mm. apply for job positions. So we started taking um, what is called affirmative action in our job descriptions. We cl clearly state that we have a preference or that some of these vacancies are exclusive uh, for some groups. Mm. And then we started seeing change. Uh, we we mm. have more and more candidates uh, coming uh, from minoritized groups now. So uh, I think we, we see um, a lot of improvement there and we are really excited about it. Uh, and then after the, the recruitment process, we also learned that if you want to do this, you really have to create um, some very, uh, a very solid foundation as well mm. to bring uh, uh, people from minoritized groups to the organization. So, um, for example, inclusiveness became one of our culture pillars, like we make mm. everybody aware in the organization that this is a very uh, important value for us. Mm. Um, we also um, realized that we need to invest in training again. So we have mm. early uh, training events about um, Uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, uh, training to prevent um, harassment, discrimination, mm. and any other forms of disrespect uh, mm. in the workplace. And we also learned that we have to be better at dealing with cultural differences. Uh, yeah. We have many different cultures inside the organization. Exactly. Yeah. And for us, it's a big priority to be very respectful mm. towards all of them. So we also do uh, cross-cultural uh, training uh, yeah. every year. Damn, and you mentioned one event that you do uh, regarding that. Uh, can can you like talk about that, like where people come and talk about their cultures and so on? Yeah. Um, yeah, so what we did last year, we had a, a team retreat. We, we got together <laughs> uh, for the first time, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> most of us. Uh, nice. And what we did is that we invited our, our national teams to prepare a presentation to tell everybody in the organization uh, about their cultures, what mm. are the good things, what are the challenges, mm. and what are the really important things everybody should know about their cultures to respect them um, mm. in the workplace and um, it was very nice uh, we loved it uh, it was so fun and so beautiful to watch uh, yeah. and learn so many things about uh, all these different cultures mm. and after the, the retreat we, we ran a survey uh, with mm. people and it was their favorite activity Wow! Uh, so yeah. we, are, we are planning to do more and more of this cool. um, yeah mm. so yeah very, oh. very exciting very I nice I really love that idea yeah and I also had some volunteers running up to me after your talk yesterday and was like We should do something like that. Like, that sounds really cool. Yeah. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Really good. Um, yeah. So that was part two. And also, uh, you talked about yesterday, um, was it like uh, Vipassana or was it like some retreats you mentioned with meditation and so on? Yes. Yeah, so um, in, in late 2016, I was invited to go to a meditation retreat. I, I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> yeah. When I was a teenager, I was taught how to meditate, but it was a very short experience. Uh, and at the time, I was not uh, feeling so well. I think I, I could say that after working with undercover investigations for many years, I, I 
I did have a lot of sad images in my mind. Sometimes it was hard to cope with them. And also, I think I was becoming more like um, I was losing optimism and hope. Mm. Uh, and when you lose that, it's so difficult for you to create change in the world. Mm. Like you really have to believe uh, the impossible is possible. Mm. Um so I said, yes, that, that sounds exciting, you know, like meditation retreat. I thought it was going to be very relaxing and like, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it was also a, a very deep dive in into myself and like being yeah. able um, to see like m my fears, uh, my insecurities, how vulnerable uh, I was as a person. So it brought me a lot of self-awareness and self-regulation as well. Like I think before uh, I started uh, doing meditation retreats, uh, it was much harder for me to control uh, my own emotions. Mm. So I did spend uh, two years. Uh, I think I did like in two years, I did eight uh, meditation retreats, wow. varying from five to 10 days. Wow. Um, yeah. After that, I also um, became a mindfulness instructor. So I used mm. to give uh, meditation courses. But mm. then when I founded Synergia, I didn't have time anymore. So I, yeah. I don't teach, I don't do meditation courses anymore. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think this experience made me... Um, yeah, made me a, a stronger person, emotionally speaking, uh, to deal with challenges. I think if, mm. if you want to be a leader or if you're... I, I didn't want to be a leader. I became one because, mm. um, yeah. But anyway, if you are in a leadership position, like emotionally speaking, you should be very strong um, because it is challenging. It's going to be challenging for you. Mm. Um, many things will be challenging. It's, it's a lot of responsibility to carry. Um, so yeah, you, you really have to work, mm. uh, on yourself as well, um, mm. uh, to be able to, to keep going. Yeah. So I think, uh, emotional intelligence or emotional, uh, balance is really important, uh, for leaders. And, um, as I said yesterday, uh, meditation is not the only tool. There are many other mm -hmm. tools out there, for example, Courses about uh, nonviolent communication also bring mm -hmm. a lot of uh, self awareness and self regulation. Um, there is therapy, um, yeah, um, maybe even yoga. I would say it also involves mm -hmm. uh, self awareness. So, yeah, I would say that um, I would consider um, finding ways to to become stronger um, emotionally uh, when if you want to have a I think for everybody yeah. <laughs> in life, yeah, uh, yeah. it makes us happier and, and, and more relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. But especially for leaders, I think it's something you should consider. Mm. Yeah. We have this thing, um, which I think is a little bit normal in the nonprofit world, I guess, for like volunteers and so on, or I guess for general people who really care about like world issues and so on, it's uh, easy to, uh, or at least here I'm talking like from a, um, like living in Norway perspective. So like that many people are like super privileged living here. And then when they learn about world issues and so on, uh, it's easy to only work for world problems and kind of forget yourself. And then like we have many people who have experienced burnout or are like close to and have to take breaks and so on. Um, so like since the organization, like since World Saving Hustle started in 2017, then we tried to have a good self-care routine, but it's still hard to really figure out how we actually take care of our volunteers and so on. Um, like we have been trying so many different things. Like we had like self-care for activists workshops and so on. And we do like retreats and like yeah, meditation and stuff like that as well. But, um, and we had our own team called Team Self Self-Care, but then it died in COVID. But now it's up again. <laughs> uh, but okay. like, do you have any like um, kind of like uh, because you, like organizational tips for how to be better at like implementing uh, self care routines for volunteers? And like, we we only have four uh, part time employees right now, mm -hmm. and the rest is volunteers. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, I think I think the key thing when you really want people um, to engage. Um, and and really uh, 
yeah, make that be um, an ongoing thing for them. You have to make ongoing efforts. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, for us, it's very important, like the well-being of our team members is very important. Mm -hmm. So what we do is to remind them uh, often that they should have um, self-care. They should. Um, so, for example, one way we do this is that we have culture pillars. Uh, that was the third topic I spoke yeah. about. So in our culture pillars, um, uh, we have the one of the, the pillars is about being safe. And f uh, and that means that we we invite um, uh, our team members to uh, ask themselves if they're if they have a healthy working uh, work routine, if they're um, taking proper care of themselves, mm. if they're sleeping well, if they're not working late. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah. we do this. Uh, it's a culture pillar, but then uh, it's not just there, you know, like, oh, you ha we have this culture pillar document and you read it once and then mm. that's it. No, uh, you really mm. make, uh, you really need to make um, your culture uh, leave inside the organization. Yeah. Uh, so what we do, like the main tool we have for this is that we have feedback cycles. So every three months, um, mm. uh, uh, team members and supervisors meet and, mm. and they talk to each other about progress. Are they being, being able to achieve progress? Are they being able to achieve their goals? Mm. But also it's a time that we ask people to look at all the cultural pillars we have and to see what they're doing in, in, in regards to them. Mm. So are they working safely? Are yeah. they being healthy? Are they, t are they taking care of themselves? Mm. Uh, so yeah, I think mm. you just have to it has to be ongoing, like, yeah. otherwise it can die. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, right now for us, we like, we have our like values, <laughs> but they're just there and there. Yeah. So yeah, we could really use that before we were better at like having one-to-one -one check ins and so on, but then it's been some time. So mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Good tips. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you have, what was the other one or did you say it? You say, uh, one way of checking in was the three month cycles. Yes. And was there another? Yes. Yeah, so um, the first thing we do is that the when people enter the organization, uh, yeah. we have an onboarding process. Exactly. So they spend between. It's long. <laughs> there are many things to cover oh. because it. Uh, we really want them to start. Uh, already like well informed about everything we do and how we do things. Uh, so the first two to three days, um, they're introduced to many things in the organization. And one, and one of the things they will be in introduced to is our um, culture pillars. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, there, there are the regular meetings every three months. Um, also, like, for example, when our our people and operations department, when they send, when they share news or like for example um so this month we are gonna have um uh, some training about emotional intelligence and that is because one of our culture pillars is to be a safe organization so yeah. we also use like these regular messages uh mm. to remind people of our culture pillars um yeah, and I think the last thing we learned as well is that we have been uh, working with, with our um, current pillars for over a year and a half now. And we are a growing organization. We are mm. changing all the time, mm. like we're facing new challenges. So we are also adapting our culture pillars for them to be better mm. and more effective and and like um, to meet our needs uh, yeah, in a better mm. way. So culture exactly. changes as well huh? yeah, yeah it should change if it's not um um optimized yet and i th yeah and there there was another thing as well like um mm. when we decided to have the culture pillars i remember uh we spoke to a consultant we really admire mm. um she specializes in nonviolent communication and she told us okay are you going to create a culture or you already have a culture you want to improve because okay. creating a culture yeah. 
can be bad because you cannot create something that is fake that doesn't mm. exist. Okay, yeah. Uh, so what we did was like we we got together, um, myself and the people and operations director, and we said, okay, these are the culture pillars we would like to have. Mm. Um, and then we sent a survey to our team members asking them, yeah. do you agree that this is already the culture we have in the organization and it should be formalized in this way. Okay, cool. And luckily wow. most of them agreed. They said, yes, yeah. we already have uh, uh, these values. We already have nice. the, these yeah. culture pillars. And then we took it from there. So I think mm. it is important that you just don't create something that doesn't really re reflect um, uh, the reality of the organization. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, we had like a minor thing. Um, well, first, I have one question. Uh, like, is this for um, like people who work, like em employees or volunteers or both? For both. For both. Yeah, it yeah. should be for both. The volunteers are, are yeah. Yeah, yeah, introduced to our culture pillars as well. Yeah, nice. Okay, yeah. And our respect mm. in the workplace policy as well. It has to be um, all volunteers and other collaborators have to to read it and sign it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you collaborate with other organizations and so on, they also have to. Yeah, they have to to yeah yeah to give their consent that they're aware of these policies. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, we never had that. It's I think. difficult to enforce yeah. it. I have to say, sometimes we forget. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but we are trying to be better at it. Yeah. How how does that go? Like, is that um. Uh, is that normal, like to do that, uh, or or like how is it? Uh, um, oh, what's the English word? Like, how is it received by the people? Um, like, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to say if it's normal if many other organizations do it. But whenever we asked other organizations to read to to give us confirmation yeah. that they they have read it and they they're okay with it. Um, we never got any complaints. So I, I think yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I can imagine like if we were to collaborate that it would just be like, Oh, nice. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good I, to I just think, be clear about it. I yeah. Think. I think it shows a lot of respect as well and how important these things are for us. Like yeah. the, the safety and the well being of our team members is really important for us. And I think it sends a good message that um, everybody should care about it and, and sharing yeah. a policy is a good thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other like main things that uh, like you want to talk about? Yeah. Um, yesterday I was, I was talking about how important it is for our movement to work in global South countries. Uh, so currently um, countries in the global South already account for 62 uh, percent of the global output of uh, meat. Um, 62 percent. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. And by 2028, uh, 74 percent of growth in the output of meat products will come from developing countries or global south countries. Mm. So what we are seeing is that we already have most animals being farmed in the global south and we are going to have more and more. Mm. Um, these countries uh, don't have a long history uh, uh, when it comes to uh, movements uh, trying to protect or reduce the suffering of farmed mm. animals. Um, so there is a lot of work to be done. Uh, I would say that animals... Um, really need help uh, uh, in, in these countries. Mm. So this is our mission. Uh, we have our mission is to only work in countries of the global south, especially in neglected countries where few or no other organizations are mm. using uh, what we consider to be effective strategies to, to reduce animal suffering. Yeah. Yeah. And there are different forms. Um, if you're interested and if you yeah. would like to to help animals um, in the global south, uh, we have um, a program. Uh, you can become uh, an online activist and take action mm. uh, for animals in these countries on social media, for example, okay. or send emails to decision makers. 
uh, you can go to our website, which is www.synergiaanimalinternational.org. Mm -hmm. uh, and there you can uh, join this community. You can also email us at, at, this, uh, at this website. You will see an email address uh, if you would like to become a volunteer mm -hmm. and help us um, do any kind of work that you have experience with. Uh, mm -hmm. we, re we really like to have... Um, yeah, good volunteers uh, that have expertise in, in, in different areas. Um, yeah, and you can also become a monthly donor. Uh, we, mm. we, we do accept donations from um, all countries. Uh, we have an international system to, to mm. receive donations. So it's also there on, on the same website. Nice. We are also looking at like more like global impact. And not like, uh, maybe not using so much time on the animals in Norway, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so when you said that you're working in countries which are more neglected and so on, and where it's maybe more like effective to use our resources, mm -hmm. perhaps. Uh, yeah. Um, that is something like I'm also really interested in. And like, is there a way, like if we in Norway would love to help animals in the global south is there a way to collaborate with you for example or mm -hmm. uh is there like how would you ad ad advise uh, or like give tips to for, as, for example, example us as yeah. an organization you mean yeah or, yeah or so or since you give tips for uh yeah since you already gave tips for individuals i yeah. feel or maybe you can go deeper into that but yeah i'm, I'm wondering as an organization yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what you're doing is already great, like giving visibility to the cause and, and to mm. animals um, in the, the global south. Um, if there are organizations that would be interested in having partnerships with us, um, I don't know, it could be any kind of idea. We, <laughs> we, are, we are really uh, collaborative and we would love cool. to hear from you if you have ideas on, on how you could help our cause or mm. our organization uh, more directly. Uh, so yes, please, please get in touch. Um, I don't know if I have like, um, yeah, specific ideas, but yeah, we are yeah. open to, yeah, to You're receiving to proposals it. and yeah. Nice. And working together with people. Cool. That's a good thing. Yeah. 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 yeah that's a very good thing. It's, it's basically the same here. Like we don't have, only one specific type of collaboration. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I was just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And also, uh, you said that, yeah, you, you didn't decide to be a leader kind of like you mm -hmm. became it. And I feel, uh, I, I know a few people and probably some of the listeners or what, viewers of this can also recognize that, um, like for example, some of our local chapter leaders mm -hmm. and, and also in other org organizations, they just feel that like, oh, but like nobody is doing this or like, I, I have to step in, I have to do this. Um, but like, how, how do you do that when you're not a leader? Like, because I feel we're many people who ended up here, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of, and yeah. it can be hard. Y you said meditation and so on is one of the things. Yes. But do, do you have some more like thoughts around that? I think it's really important as well. Like, uh, to choose something that you're really passionate about. Uh, so um, before I founded Synergia, I, I did many different things. Uh, I volunteered for, for many different organizations. Mm. Um, and, um, and I think once, once you realize what, what really works, what really makes you excited about uh, mm. uh, yeah, helping causes, uh, it could be, I don't know, maybe um, writing blog posts or, or working with comms really makes you really excited. It gives, us, gives you a lot of energy or other people um, prefer to, to do a, a volunteer engagement, uh, see people, talk to people every day. Mm. I think once you get into something that uh, really engages you, uh, I think that's sustainable. It sustains you for, for some time. And then it's, it becomes natural to become a leader because you're so passionate, like, mm. and, and usually when you love doing something, you can do it really well. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's important to find your, your, your niche, like the very specific thing that, um, brings you a lot of energy and excitement. Mm. Yeah. 
And do you have any thoughts on how to like delegate better or like give ownership to other people in the organization? Yeah. Like, I, I find that really hard at times. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so there are some, some models, like some templates you can use. I think the, the most important thing about delegation when, when we don't think about it, like let's, oh, let's ask someone, somebody to do it. Mm. And it's usually you're giving this person an activity or an, or a task that you are very familiar with and you have been doing it for a long time and you just say, do it. But you don't mm -hmm. explain how it has to be done in detail. You don't okay, explain yeah, this step yeah. by step. And it's not about what has to be done, but how, what are the very important things you should keep in mind when you're doing it, what are the expected outcomes. So mm. I think what what we learned is that if you want to delegate, you have to spend time preparing the delegation process mm. and you have to formalize it. You have to write it down. Yeah. You have to take time to explain to the person all these um, uh, details because then the person will be more prepared to do it. Yeah, and yeah. It, And then you don't need to make so many corrections or, or like keep true, true. like yeah. going back and forth. No, this needs to be improved. You're, mm. Yeah. And I think the other thing that is really important to say about delegation is that um, I think we, we had that uh, and I, I did. Like I am a doer. I love doing things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes uh, we feel like oh, no, it's going to take me more time to ask somebody else to do it. It's it's going to be faster and easier for me to do it. Yeah, uh, I can relate. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's not true. Like, yeah. if you if you have start, uh, if you start having uh, bigger teams, you cannot mm. do everything. And people are there because they want to do it. Yeah. And if you keep doing it yourself, you're not giving these people the opportunity to grow and learn mm. and develop themselves because you're taking this opportunity away mm. from them. Mm. So we really have to be patient uh, and say, I'm going to teach them how to do it. It mm. might take some time in the beginning, but once they learn, mm. we are going to be, become much more productive as a team because um, sure. th there are more people skilled in, in, in doing the activities that are really needed and important for the yeah. organization. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got some chills, actually. <laughs> I'm like thinking about the future and uh, yeah, and these tips really hit, actually. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have uh, how uh, do you have any good system of like task management or so or like do you use like Trello or Asana Notion or something mm -hmm. like that or how do you have a good overview over everything you're doing and deadlines and stuff like that? Yeah, we we use Monday, uh, Monday yeah. which is similar to Asana. True, true. Um, some teams like it, some teams <laughs> don't like it. Uh, okay, yeah, we are thinking about it. Um, mm. Uh, but I think what, what we learned recently as well is that we have um, early goals, like our early goals are very clear okay. um, yeah. and people know them, but we are not checking progress uh, regularly enough. Mm. So now we are gonna we are building some uh, spreadsheets for for each department uh, with monthly goals and we are gonna check on them uh, okay. like every month. Yeah. And, and that might like sound a bit, a little bit like too much or, you know, are, is, are they putting a lot of pressure and everybody has to deliver things, but yeah. actually it's the opposite because if yeah. you check things regularly, mm. it builds less pressure Yeah, and okay, you can see what you need to do on time mm. if you're not on track. Exactly. But if you take too long, maybe you're going to reach the end of the year and say, oh, we didn't reach our goals and now we have to you know, to really rush and, and try to yeah. do as much as we can. So yearly goals, but breaking them down to yeah. monthly goals. Yeah. yeah, and making them more specific for every person in the organization who mm. is responsible for what. Because yeah. uh, that sometimes it's not very well defined as mm. well. True. And again, it can make people uh, more stressed and, mm. and unsure about uh, mm. what they have to do. And this is also still employees and volunteers but maybe a fewer for the volunteers or like... We don't have volunteers engaged. Um, like that? Uh, li like that, yeah. It, we are working on it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm talking more about team members. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. A, a little broad question, but like... Um, and I think you've answered a lot of it already, but like, is there any more pillars to talk about when building strong teams? 
Mm-hmm. Like and it's like we talked about the delegation and the culture, uh, and also like Monday <laughs> or like the, uh, like are there anything more which is important to talk about when thinking about building strong teams? Yeah, I think there's there's something um, important. So I think when you bring uh, new people to the organization. Mm. You should try to find ways um, to find out the skills they already have and the skills they need to develop. Okay, yeah. Because a lot of the times, like what can really um, uh, make people very stressed or, or, or very demotivated is that you give them tasks that are too easy for them. Mm. They, they become, they get bored because it's just too easy and yeah. too simple. And on the other hand, you can do the opposite. You can give people tasks that are really exciting, but they are too challenging. Mm. They are not ready to take that challenge. So like taking the time to learn, mm. um, you know, uh, what your team members are ready to do and what they need to be trained on to, to be able to deliver mm. and making like this kind of personal development plans. You know, Ooh, yeah. nice. how yeah. do I develop this person? What yes. does this person need to really succeed and yes. grow in the organization? So mm. I think uh, I think that's very important as well. Cool. Yeah. Again, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, and regard. Yeah. Do you have any other like recommendations, like resources? I don't know books, documentaries, websites. Uh, re- regarding what we've been talking about, we will of course link like your organization and ev- everything in the description. Yeah, but yeah. There is a, a book called Self Compassion by an American psychologist called uh, Christine Neff. I would strongly recommend it to anybody, uh, nice. but especially uh, to people who think they are being too hard on themselves mm. um, or not kind enough um, mm. to themselves. Uh, that really helps you see things more clearly and maybe uh, become kinder uh, wow. to yourself. Mm. And I think that that's really important for, for leaders, I would say. Uh, I think leaders need mm. to develop self-compassion. So I would wow. strongly recommend it. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. Do you have any last thoughts or? No. No? That's okay. it. Then just thank you so much, Carolina, for taking thank the you. time. Yeah. Thank you. Cool.